Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Brave Kids Art Club. My name is Brad and I'm so excited that you guys decided to come and draw with me. Thank you guys so much. This always means so much to me because not only do I draw for my job, but I also do this every single day with you and it makes my day. So thank you guys so much for showing up and drawing with me. Okay, so what is the animal we're going to be drawing today? Let me give you a few hints. It is the biggest of all the different types of deer. It has massive antlers that they also call paddles and they're really good swimmers. Did you guess it? You got it, we are drawing a moose today. Now I have a special relationship with moose because I've run into them multiple times while I've gone backpacking. And I actually have a pretty funny story that I have over at my other YouTube channel. And you can go check that out with your parents right up here in the corner. But right now we're gonna start drawing our moose and we need to make sure that we have everything that we need to get started. All right, make sure you have a clean sheet of paper out, of course, and then we need to have a pencil with uh, an eraser of some type handy because we do do a lot of erasing because we're gonna do some sketching first just to kind of figure out where things are gonna go and then we're gonna go over it all with an outline of a dark pen or a marker. And then at the very end, we'll do the best part, which is the coloring. So. I'm looking forward to that, but first we need to get the sketch composed on our page and make sure it looks right before we get to the color in our, in our marker. All right, let's draw our moose. Now moose are huge. Like I said, it's the largest of all the deer, but it's so big that I'm really tall. I'm over six feet tall and these, just their shoulders are over six feet tall or taller than me when I'm standing up. And then that's not even counting their head if it was to sit up or to put all the way up, plus their antlers. So they're really, really, really massive animals. Okay, let's do this. Let's figure out the body. Let's kind of draw a rectangle. Maybe we'll draw a rectangle to start off with the body. So let's do this. We're gonna do, we're gonna draw it lightly because we have a lot of pieces that we're gonna add to this and we're gonna make some changes. We're not gonna keep it this way. So I'm gonna draw like this. We gotta leave room for those big, long legs. They have really long, tall legs. We'll do that. We'll draw a little rectangle there. Remember, we've got to leave some room on the top and the bottom because they are very, very tall. Okay, so we have the body. We need to start blocking out some other parts of the body and then we'll refine it and make it look better. But right now, let's start with maybe the a circle right here in this corner, right there. That's going to be the head of our moose. And then we're going to do the long nose. They have a big, long snout like most of our deer, but it even has a longer one, more like a horse. I would say more than a deer, more like a horse. I'm gonna go back like this. So we're gonna draw that one line. You know, let me make that a little clearer there. Just draw a line butting up to that, that circle there. And then what we're gonna do is just do like a, I guess you can, if you wanted to, if it make it easier for you, you can draw a circle here to kind of give you a guide. But I'm gonna bring it in here. So you can draw that how you'd like. I just kind of cut off the corners a little bit. So it's a little bit more angular and then I'm going to follow that circle up for the mouth and then I'm going to bring it back down here just a little bit and then I'll connect it and that'll be where the mouth is. Now they have something also hanging underneath right underneath their neck I guess not too far from what I got here they got a hairy <laughs> little thing right there hanging from their neck um, but it's not a beard it's actually called a dewlap. And uh, if you remember that term, it's because you probably drew the iguana with me and we drew dewlaps on the bottom of our iguana's neck. So it's the same, it's called the same thing. Or, you know, and with moose, they also call them a bell, but either one, but they have this skin that kind of hangs down here and fur that kind of dangles. So we're just gonna go, we're just gonna draw a little bit of that right there. And we'll get, again, we'll get back to all this a little bit later, but we'll, we're just trying to figure out where the body goes. All right, so from here at the back of this part of the dewlap, we're going to just do a little diagonal line right here to kind of, and then what that means is we're going to cut off all of this part right here, the square. So that's really important because that's not the shape of our moose. So we're going to cut that off right here. So get out your eraser and erase that line right there. We don't need any of those, that corner of our, of our rectangle. So let's have them standing here. Um, maybe we'll have Let's do the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade on us, on people, is right back here. When you move around, these little things that stick out, they look like wings if you push your arms back, those are your shoulder blades. They have really big shoulder blades and that's actually what, instead of drawing the leg here first, let's draw this little part of their neck. I'm actually gonna do that just so you can kind of tell. They actually have a big hump. It looks like a big hump on their back 
And that's actually their shoulder blades and their big, strong shoulder muscles. They're, they're really strong animals. So we're gonna draw, that might be a little bit too, too much, but you'll, you can see right here, that's gonna be a big, big hump on the back. So draw that in. And then that's really what distinguishes it from other deer is the big long legs, the big wide hooves. We'll talk about all this, but that hump right there is a big one. Okay, so let's do a little like a really stretched out C shape right here for the, for the front leg. And then we're just gonna do a little line right here, a diagonal line to kind of match up with that little corner that we've already made. And I'll probably just pull it into right about there. And then I'm gonna go in a little bit. I'm gonna taper it in. Tapering means it gets either smaller or it gets bigger, but it's not the same. So we're gonna, you'll, you'll do that a little bit for the leg so it gets a little bit smaller. Starts big, gets smaller. And then you wanna draw a really, really faint circle right here for their knee joint. That's right where that leg bends, so like right there. And so we'll draw that on there. We'll erase a part of that in a second. And from there, we're actually gonna go and have it go out a little bit. Just like we tapered it in, now we're gonna taper it out and have it kinda of go wide because the moose's feet are really, really wide. Their hooves are really wide. And you wanna know why they're so wide? It's because they live in areas with lots of snow. And when they live in an area with the snow and they're that big, it's hard for them to walk in snow without going all the way through it and making it really tough. So their feet are wide, so they act kinda of like snowshoes and they're wider and they can sit on top of the surface a little easier and not get sunk right into the ground. It's pretty cool, huh? They only live in Northern America. So at the t if you're looking at the map of the United States, it's at the very, very top and you get Canada above that and you have Alaska and those are the areas where moose live. So a lot of colder areas. All right, so I erased this little part of the, the joint in the middle because I don't need that circle over there. I just wanted that shape on the outside if that makes sense. Ooh, he's got a big tall leg. <laughs> tall, tall, tall legs. Okay, so let's do the other leg that's gonna be on the, in the front here, which is that back leg. And it's actually shorter. The, the front legs are longer than the back legs and it makes it so it's easier for jumping over things. I didn't know that. I thought they would be the exact same size, but they are not. Okay, so we're gonna draw a little backwards C shape, a little curve, a little arc right here. And we're gonna kind of meet up the, the knee or the joint with the back one. So it's about the same spot. And then I'm gonna go forward. If you need to draw a little line right here at the bottom, just to kind of see where the ground is, you can do that. That might help you a little bit, kind of make sure that all the, the hooves kind of match up in the same spots. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one right there. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. I'm gonna move that back just a little bit. It's a little too far forward. I'm gonna move that probably like right there. There we go. Make that wide hoof. There we go. And then I'm just gonna kind of follow this in this line. I'm gonna give it a line there. And then I'm gonna just go from the back of this the top left of the corner of here, I'm gonna have it go down to kind of meet up with there. And if that looks kind of weird, I might move it back just a little bit. I might move it back a little bit. I actually will probably move the whole thing even maybe maybe a little bit down. You can kind of change it however you want. Maybe it could still be that box shape. I'm kind of guessing as I go <laughs> and you can change it to be whatever you'd like it to be. So I think I'm gonna keep this kind of flat out there and then I'm gonna round off that corner here at the end. So instead of having just a square, I'm gonna round it off. Okay, that makes it feel a little bit better. Not as long, but it should look pretty good. Okay, perfect. They do have a little tail in the back. We can just add that to the back. So now we need to do the legs in the back. So let's start with this hind leg here, the back leg. I'm gonna do another little line that's just a little little diagonal. I'm gonna kind of meet it up with this joint right here. And I'm gonna do something very similar to what I already have. Like that. And then I'm gonna go in a little bit, taper it in a little bit. We're using that word taper quite a bit today. 
<laughs> Hopefully you learn what that word means. If you learn nothing else from this, we'll learn what tapered means. Start small, goes big, or big, goes small. Okay. So we got the back leg there, so it's walking, or standing there at least. And let's make it a little, maybe it's like using its front hoof just to kind of to kind of look around or push something around. So let's lift this one up. And we'll go like this. There we go. Let's draw another circle here because we're going to draw another joint for the front leg. And then we're going to do kind of a, you can do a line straight down if you want. Then we're going to taper it just a little bit. Taper it out. And then I'm going to do a little line back here because we're going to draw that hoof right there. Perfect. So if you're having a really hard time with these legs, I don't condone cheating, but if you were to cheat, you could put them in some really tall grass or some water because a lot of times they'll stand out in water and they'll eat a lot of the, the, the grasses and things and plants in the water. And so you'll see them there a lot. They're really good swimmers and they like to spend time out there. So technically their legs could be underwater. I'm just saying. So I'm just going to add a few more lines to make sure you can see that there are hooves there. And then let's work on the, the antlers and the face a little bit. So all this stuff in the middle of this circle and this part of the circle, I'm just going to erase because I don't need it anymore. I just needed it as a guide. So I'm just going to erase this back part, this middle part, and right here. It's stuck in my fingernail. Okay, let's see. I'll be able to just keep this part right here and I'll stop. Let's see, is that good? Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll just keep that one little part under there and not connect these ends. And we'll draw the eye. Should we draw the eye on there? So we already, yeah, that'll help. That'll help us see what we're working with. I'm gonna draw the eye while I'm looking down at whatever tasty thing that they're eating. Like I said, they like to eat things out of the water. They can, in terms of like plants and things, but they can also, they eat like twigs and leaves and pine cones, <laughs> all sorts of things on the ground. Okay, so let's put the little nose, little nostril on their nose. They got a big nostril because they got a big nose. Let's also do like a little um, leaf shape right here for their ear. I'm gonna do a little bigger than that. A little leaf shape for the ear. For the, for the antlers, this is where you get to really be creative. So I'll let you take some creative liberties there. You can go look at some pictures of moose antlers and uh, draw your own, but I'm gonna try and think of a, I think what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna kinda have them match up right with the top of the head. I'm gonna do like a little bowl shape, like this. Shoop, there we go. So let's see, I'm gonna do maybe like a, maybe like this. There's like a little squiggly pattern right here. And then I'm gonna go down real low. I'm gonna do this one little front part like that. Yeah, I like how that looks. I might just connect it. I'll draw a little line there to connect it to the head. Because the, the antlers are bone, and they're actually an extension of their skull. The skull's the big bone in your head. In the winter, these will actually fall off. So they have two of them, they have one on either side. And those will get really big throughout the year, and they fall off, and then they have new ones. And it doesn't hurt them, they just fall off, and they grow new ones. It's pretty crazy, because they get big. Those, those antlers can get really, really big. All right. I think I'm ready to start dropping in my marker lines, my outlines, and then uh, from there we'll go on and and uh, refine it a little bit more. Refine just means to kind of clean up and make it look better or what to what we want it to be at the very end. So let's start with the back part of their bottom. We'll go back to their leg here. Go down. So like I was saying earlier, I've actually seen one of these in person. I do a lot of backpacking. I go hiking up in the mountains and uh, I bring all my stuff with me, my tent, my sleeping bag. I bring all that with me, my food, and I can stay up there on the top of the mountain for a little bit and just uh, enjoy nature. And it's pretty cool. I see lots of really fun animals. Some uh, really cool animals that are kind of scary. <laughs> I've run into bears before, I've run into moose, 
and the moose that I've run into, they are so big. They're so incredibly big. It's hard to explain because I'm very, very tall and this moose made me look very, very small. <laughs> very small. I didn't even reach its shoulders, which is this part right here. I, my head wasn't even that tall. I was probably about this tall. And they do have tempers. Sometimes they can get a little a little angry. So you don't really want to get in their, in their way. You want to kind of leave the moose alone. And that's exactly what I did. Now I have a really crazy story about a time a moose didn't leave me alone. And that's that video I was referencing earlier that's on my other channel. So if you want to watch that with your parents, uh, I also draw another moose there. I draw the moose that, um, that I met on that trip and uh, while telling the whole story. So I won't tell you the whole story here, but you can look it up over there. Um, earlier in the video, it's just right there at the top. I'll even put it in the link below. Okay, let's fix these legs right here. Now, I accidentally didn't erase some of that, but I remembered that I'm not gonna fill in all that circle. So now I'm just gonna do those hooves, those really wide hooves. Now right here, you can draw a straight line or you can maybe, you know, you can curve it up a little bit. You can, you can do what you want. <laughs> you can, you don't have to follow this exactly. That's what's so cool about drawing and you can just kind of pick the parts that you want to make it that look most like that animal, their most, um, their most distinguishing attributes, which means like they're the parts that make them look like them, like having these big antlers on the top and that big nose and kind of skinny legs <laughs> with the big hooves. Looks kind of, looks kind of funny, but they were real strong. We can do that and take some liberties there. So I'm gonna, like I said, right here, I'm gonna draw kind of a straight line right there. And then I'm gonna kind of curve it up there like that. And then I'm gonna do the head. Have that go right over there. Oops, I'm gonna try to connect that. Have any of you gone camping or hiking and seen some really cool animals on your trips? That'd be pretty cool. Some of you might just see all these animals in your backyard. <laughs> When I lived in Texas, we had lots and lots of animals in our yard. We had foxes, we had, we had a whole family of deer that lived in our backyard. There was about 15 of them. We had armadillos in our yard. We had road runners, lizards, snakes, scorpions. We had everything, the good and the bad. We had tarantulas. My wife didn't quite like it as much as me and the kids liked it, but <laughs> it was kind of cool to be living somewhere where there were so many animals around. We just have to be respectful of the animals in their space. Because some of the animals, like the moose, are really dangerous if you get in their way. That's why we leave them be. So we're going to have them looking down. Maybe they're looking down at a nice juicy pine cone. I didn't know they ate pine cones. <laughs> there we go. A few little lines here to show that it's got the fur. Their fur is actually really cool. Their, their hair on their body is uh, really cool because like I said, they live in really cold areas. And uh, in those cold areas, they have to have some really warm fur. And it doesn't look like they're super, super furry. Um, but what it actually is, is they have their individual hairs are hollow and it makes it so it insulates them and keeps them really warm. It's pretty cool. But go ahead now, this is a good point for you to go and just erase all of this sketch underneath. And then what we're going to do is, I, well, at least I'm going to grab my markers. You can grab whatever you want. Maybe you have crayons or colored pencils or something, and uh, you're going to do your coloring. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and just erase and finish up the things that we need, and then we'll catch up right after I get my coloring done, and uh, we'll wrap this up. Does that sound good? Perfect. I think I'm finished. And while I was doing my coloring, 
I actually thought of a name for my moose. And because he's got these giant antlers, that means he's a boy moose. And so I'm going to name him after my good friend, Aaron. So Aaron the moose turned out great. I'm really happy with how he turned out. How did yours turn out? Awesome. Well, you know I'd love to see what you guys made, but the only way I can do that is if your parents email us pictures of what you've made, or you can go to Brave Kids Art Club on Instagram and just tag us, or use the hashtag Brave Kids Art Club, and that way we'll get a chance to, to see what you made. And I'm really excited to see it because this, uh, this moose is a really fun one for me to draw, so I hope you had a fun time drawing it as well. But, oh, and I'm really proud of what I drew, so I need to go ahead and write my name, or use my initials right here. I'm gonna do that so everybody knows. Oops, there we go. Well, hopefully this was as fun for you as it was for me because I had a blast drawing this moose. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and drawing with me. Remember, Monday through Friday, we do this every single week. Subscribe and then remember, be brave, be creative, and most importantly, be you. Alrighty, we'll see you guys next time.